we are going to take the derivative of tangent of arc sine of a x, where a is a constant. First thing we're going to do is set up a triangle to help us uh, translate this stuff up here. Uh, right triangle. Uh, so arc sine is a function that translates an opposite side over hypotenuse ratio um, of a right triangle into an angle which we'll call theta. And we can write theta here. And tangent is a function which turns our angle theta into an uh, opposite side over adjacent side. Now in this case we have arc sine of ax so for convenience a something that'll uh, fulfill this for us is to say opposite equals ax and tan and hypotenuse equals one. So we have opposite equals ax hypotenuse equals one and we want to solve for this missing side. We can do that using the Py Pythagorean theorem. So opposite squared plus adjacent squared equals hypotenuse squared. Opposite side equals ax. So we have ax, all of that, squared plus the adjacent side is what we're solving for. So plus adjacent squared equals and the hypotenuse is equal to 1, so 1 squared. ax, all of that squared, is equal to a squared x squared. So we'll rewrite that and subtract from both sides of the equation. So we have adjacent squared equals 1 minus a squared x squared. Um, and then we'll take the square root of both sides. So adjacent, fix that j adjacent equals square root of 1 minus a squared x squared and we can write that up here so square root of 1 minus a squared x squared and that looks kind of like a 9 so that'll fix that a nice a and so remember we're solving for tangent of the theta, which we produced using arc sine of x. So tangent of theta is opposite, the opposite side over the adjacent side. So when we take the tangent, y is going to equal, tangent of theta is going to equal ax over square root of 1 minus a squared x squared. And that's a much more convenient derivative to take than this. So let's use this. Uh, first, I will rewrite, I will rewrite this uh, with the bottom in exponential form instead of uh, in the denominator. So let's do that first. So y equals ax times the uh, 1 minus a squared x squared to the negative 1 half. And we'll take the derivative with respect to x of both sides. We get dy dx equals d dx of ax times 1 minus a squared x squared, the negative 1 half. And since we have a function times a function, we can uh, use product rule. So we'll break this up now. We'll rewrite it using product rule. So dy dx equals d dx of ax times 1 minus a squared x squared to the negative 1 half plus ax times 
like that, times the derivative of um, 1 minus a squared x squared, all of that to the negative 1 half. So the derivative of ax, let's write, first let's write dy dx equals, the derivative of ax is just going to be a, um, multiply that by 1 minus uh, a squared x squared, all of that to negative 1 half plus ax times the derivative of this. We're going to have to use a u substitution. So let's set our u equal to 1 minus a squared x squared. And we already know we're going to take the derivative with respect to x of u. So let's just do that now. du dx equals, um, this goes to 0. We get a negative and 2a squared x. Um, so now doing the u substitution of this, let's say du dx times d, du of u to the negative one half and du dx is negative, we already solved as negative 2a squared times x. Derivative of u to the negative one half it, with respect to u is going to be um, negative one half times u to the negative three halves. And let's rewrite that without the u. So we have negative two a, that looks like a z. That is, that's not right. We don't have any zebras. So we have negative two a squared x. Wow, I can't write. One more time, third time's a charm. Negative two a squared x times negative one half and u, like we set up here, is equal to one minus a squared x squared. So negative one times one minus a squared x squared. And that's all to the negative three halves. Now here's a multiplication. First of all, this is a negative times a negative, so let's cancel these. Uh, and then we have the, uh, the, the twos, which are gonna cancel out. And this is just a one, so we can get rid of that. So we have a squared x times this bit. We can bring down this ax. So it's ax times this. And we have a plus sign. It's a different term. So we can bring down this stuff, which is going to be a times 1 minus a squared x squared to the negative 1 half. Um, let's make that multiplication. So we have a times 1 minus a. Well, let's. Why don't I rewrite this while I, while I go through? So I have a over uh, this. This whole bit is going to be equal to the square root of 1 minus a squared x squared plus ax times a squared x is going to be a to the third x 
squared. Uh, and that's all going to be over. Don't forget this is dy dx. So dy dx equals. We'll say a to the third x squared over. One minus a squared x squared all to the three halves. And let's see if we have any any kind of simplification we would want to make from here. Doesn't look like it. So we are done.